You thought the world would be free of radioactive threats from the underground world after the events of the original Blaster Master. Yet for reasons unknown, radioactive energy is destroying every living thing on Earth. Only Jason can stop it. And this time, he can't use his super-equipped car. He's got to do it alone. Armed with blistering lanterns, mega-power hyper-bombs, and skull-rattling super-bombs, Jason must blaze a dizzying path deep down beneath the surface of the planet to seek out the mutant bosses, then destroy them. This wasn't a port of the 1988 NES game. We would get one, but not until the Game Boy Color came out. In fact, it's one of those that wasn't strictly a Blaster Master game. It's a sequel to Robo Warrior, which itself is a Bomberman spin-off. It's not much of a stretch, though. The side-on overworld platforming levels that featured the tank aren't there in this game, the look more closely resembling the top-down cave stages. Each level, or period, takes place in this overhead perspective field that has various features such as water, trees, rocks, and so on. There are lots of different respawning enemies milling about, which you can shoot using A or attempt to kill using bombs that you place with B. There are four different types of bomb that you can lay. Your normal one has an infinite supply and a blast radius of 3x3 three three tiles. You can lay up to four of these at any one time, which comes in really handy against some bosses. The other three types of bomb you need to collect on the levels by collecting tiles that you blast out of the scenery or find in caves. These all have different blast effects. An arrow that fires off in the direction you were walking when you placed it, blowing up on each tile until hitting something indestructible. A cross shape that fires a four-way shot horizontally and vertically, and one that spreads out in a kind of diamond shape. These last ones are the most destructive, the hardest for yourself to avoid, and the rarest to find. As in Bomberman, you can get caught in your own blast radius, which takes off half your health, and this is a common way to die when you start off. Once you place a bomb, you can't pass over it until it explodes, so be aware that you can easily trap yourself. Having unlimited standard bombs and being able to place four at a time, it's very tempting to go a little gung-ho and spam before realizing you're bombing your way into a corner. When I say that you need to essentially mine out the bombs from the scenery, there are things that look like trees that you need to destroy by planting bombs near them. Some will drop these icons with the different bombs on, others give you a shield or make you move faster. There are E icons that replenish your health and three tools. These include a rubber ring that lets you move across water and a lantern that lets you see in the dark. Also, in a predetermined location, there will be a key, which you need to find before the timer runs out in order to open up the exit. There are nine worlds, each of which have anywhere between two and five stages. Each world culminates in a boss fight. These are pretty hard. They're usually massive hulking monsters of some description that move around the screen in a particular pattern and have a weak spot. They're often chasing after you, and you'll need to place bombs in their way at just the right timing. Don't bother trying to shoot them with your gun as it's weak as hell, and the beast will just run into you before you can get a shot away anyhow. They're all different though, which provides great variation. There's one behind a force field that shoots out its tongue toad-like at you. It can eat your bombs and is instant death if it gets you. Obviously, your ordinary bombs won't cut it here. You need to use the ones that fire off in a direction, timed just right to take him out. There's a massive serpent that extends its body across the whole screen until you're trapped. You have to quickly blow its head off so it retreats before you run out of room. This was the first part of the game where I really started feeling the pinch. With nine worlds and two to five stages per world, there's something like 35 to 40 levels in Blaster Master Boy. The boss fights are the real highlight of the game, but sadly the variation is a little lacking throughout the rest of it. Only one song throughout, with a different one for the bosses, makes for quite a dull auditory experience as well. The gameplay is certainly fun, and provides an interesting hybrid between Blaster Master and Bomberman, but once you're four or five worlds in, you get the distinct feeling that the solitary mechanic has been spread slightly too thinly. Still, it's definitely one worth trying.
Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or, alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.